first devlog for this MMORPG project that I've been working on. Since this is the very first video of the series, I just want to give a quick intro about me. Um, I'm a solo developer, I've released multiple titles on Steam, I have a lot of experience with multiplayer games, uh, network frameworks, databases, etc. And yeah, I think this will be a fun challenge for me. The inspiration for this project comes from being a big World of Warcraft fan. I, as well as many others, have been wanting a new game similar to WoW, so I figured I would attempt to make it myself. I'm fully aware that this is a daunting task and pretty much impossible for a solo developer, uh, so you'll see a lot of compromises along the way. This video will be more of a look at the current state of the game. Um, it'll just give like a high level look at all the current systems. Uh, keep in mind that all these systems and all the UI are all placeholders and they're just to give an idea of what the game will look like. In future videos, we'll dive much more into detail about each of these systems and how they're developed. So yeah, let's jump right into it. To start, uh, we have a basic functioning character creation screen. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's get into it and make our first character. I currently only have the female model working right now, um, but I plan to have both female and male in the future. That's why there's no option to change your gender yet. Um, as you can see, uh, we're able to create our character with quite a few customization options. Right now, uh, you can change your hairstyle, hair color, eye color, your skin color, your facial textures, as well as uh, face and body tattoos. And uh, you can change the color of those tattoos as well. This is all just to start. I'll be implementing more customization options in the future. For classes, currently there's only the Archer class. Um, I figured it was the most complicated, so I might as well start with it. There's, so yeah, there's currently no option to change your class yet. I plan on having around five classes for release, um, those being Archer, Warrior, Mage, Priest, and Rogue, pretty standard. Um, so yeah, let's create our character name and click Create. You can see here that we just created our new character. This created a character entry in our database and assigned it to our account. I forgot to mention that all the accounts are created and logged in directly from your Steam account, so there's no need for any logins or anything. In this character entry in our database, uh, it saves all of the customization data that you selected during creation. So yeah, let's get into it and click play. So we have just entered the game on our new character. This is the current default spawn location for now, but I will have a dedicated spawn location once it's been created. Let's go ahead and check our inventory as we've been given some starting gear and let's go ahead and equip these items. For now, these items have no stats attached to them and all of this stat information on the side here is just for show right now. As you can see, uh, we have our starting gear on and you can see it on our character. Our database keeps track of all the items in our inventory as well as all the items we have equipped. Uh, so all that information is saved between play sessions. Now let's take a look into some of the character animations. You can think of this as a first look into animations for walking, running, and jumping. We use different animations for character movement based on whether the character has an enemy target or not. Essentially, it's blending between these different animation trees based on if the character is in combat and also depending on the character's class. There will be specific combat animation trees for each class, however right now it's limited to the archer only. Each of these animation trees has its own animations for movement and combat. Right now we're in the default out of combat animation tree, which is what you're seeing here. Now you can see that we just targeted this mob and we have switched over into the archer animation tree. We have a bunch of archer animations that we can use for different spells and we can control the speed of those animations based on the cast time of the spell we are casting. Now we have killed the mob and untargeted it and we return back to the default out of combat animation tree. Now let's take a quick look into the NPC and pathfinding systems. I built this obstacle for testing the pathing system. I figure that if they're able to handle this obstacle that they can pretty much navigate walking on any type of terrain or obstacle. Right now the mob is in an out of combat state and is selecting random points on our nav mesh to walk to. Now you can see that the mob has us targeted and will attempt to run to the closest point to my character. We can run around the obstacle and we can jump off it and the mob will always find a path to us. Here 
here you can see what that looks like when the mob is deciding where to run to. I would like to quickly go over the networking setup that we have implemented, as obviously one of the most important parts of an MMO is going to be the networking. The game is currently hooked up to a state-driven network SDK, which will support around 200 concurrent users per server. I will be using AWS to host the servers, and these AWS instances will be dynamically created and shut down based on how many people are playing. Right now, it's set up to where each of the servers is its own world, and you can think of basically how old school RuneScape works where you can join any of the worlds on login. This could change as I do like the way that Classic WoW is set up to where each of the realms is basically its own community. The game is being built with an authoritative server architecture in mind. Basically what this means is that anything of importance needs to go through the server and has to be authenticated by the server before updating any of the clients. So here's a preview of two clients connected to the same dedicated server currently running on AWS. You can see that everything is synced between the server and clients. Here's a simple mount system that I've been working on. I'll talk more about this later in the video, um, but you can see that this is also working over the network. Now let's talk a little bit about the graphics and how I'll be attempting to tackle the open world aspect of the game. The style of graphics is going to be in the stylized genre. Basically, this allows me to be able to use low poly models uh, to get higher performance while still maintaining a higher quality look for the game. Uh, for those interested, the game is being built with Unity Engine and the world is being built with Gaia for procedural world generation. The current setup is to use terrain segments that are generated with Gaia and then I manually connect them after. This is what it looks like when you're generating those procedural terrain segments. You have full control over everything, like how mountainous you want it, the different foliage you want, the elevation of that foliage to spawn, uh, rocks, textures, literally everything. And this is just scratching the surface. I will go into much more detail about procedural terrain generation in later videos. Each model has its own level of detail. Uh, basically what this means is that each model has multiple versions of itself. Uh, each of those versions has a different polygon count. The model is then switched out real time based on how far away the camera is from that model. So basically the further the model is away from the camera, then the easier it is to render. So it's a common meme in indie game development that game developers can't seem to finish a project because they're always wanting to move on to the next project. One thing I find that helps me continue to stay motivated on a project is to save some of the fun system design for when you're feeling that urge to switch to another project. So for this reason, here's an early look into some of the more fun aspects that I've worked on so far that helps me stay motivated. Here's a quick look at a mount system as well as a pet system for the archer class. Again, I haven't spent a ton of time on these systems yet and they'll definitely still need a lot of work, but when we're talking about MMOs, everyone wants to see mounts and pets. So that was an early look into the game. I'll be posting more devlogs in the near future with progress updates so make sure to subscribe. Also let me know if you like the format of this video and what you would like to see more of or what you would like to see changed in the future. I plan on going much more in depth with each of the systems implemented in the future and how I go about solving certain problems. I want to build this game around the community so I'll be making a discord soon where everyone can voice their opinions and suggestions on new and existing features. There will also be demos hosted to let the community get early access to the game, as I believe letting the community play the game and submit feedback in early development will immensely help the general direction and feel of the game.